Um, my presentation is Maintaining Drupal Without Drush. My name is Nicole Bluto. Uh, let me put up my presentation right now. Okay, there we go. So then I want to play. Oh, let's start it from the beginning. Okay, maintaining Drupal without Drush. Uh, a lot of people are using Drush to maintain Drupal. The problem with that is that you need access to the server to install Drush. Uh, you can certainly install Drush on your local machine, but beyond that, if you don't have access, you're not going to be able to use it. And you're going to want to know how to maintain a Drupal site that's on a shared hosting environment. And you will not be able to use Drush. And this is how you do it. Um, here's the lie. They say Drupal is free as in speech, free as in beer. OK, sure, it's free. You don't have to pay to download it or anything. But um, it's not free as in beer. You're not going to take it, drink it, have a good time. You're going to take it install it, take care of it, install core updates, install updates to modules, uh, debug, you're going to do a lot of stuff. So this is the truth. Free as in kittens. You can get a free kittens, they're, kitten, they're cute, uh, you fall in love with it, uh, but you have to feed it, take care of it, clean its cat box, take it to the vet. Okay, so don't believe the hype. Drupal requires maintenance. You cannot install Drupal and then let it be. You have to always go back. You have to install the core updates, the security updates on your modules and in core itself. Uh, it requires proper care and feeding or else. Or else is important. Or else you're going to get hacked. You're going to get spammed. You're going to you're going to have a hard time. You're going to try to run an update and it's not going to work because it's too out of date. So Please remember, take care of your Drupal kitten. Okay, so the proper care and feeding is core updates, module updates, and theme updates. Okay, so here's how a core update goes, and this is what we're going to this is what we're gonna do. Uh, we are going to do it for real. So this is the main, the main process. So I'm going to just go ahead and go to my live site. And I'm hoping that I'm on the internet. OK, so I hit Escape. Let's bring up the site. OK, so here's my site. How do I know that I need an update? Uh, I, I have a module installed here called Admin Menu. And it gives me this cool drop-down menu bar. I highly recommend it. But this is another module that you have to update. You have to make sure you have the most recent, or else it doesn't work very well. So you want to look at reports, and you want to look at the available updates list. This is local, so it shouldn't matter. All right, hang on. Let me pause my camps. Okay, here's the, the available updates page. Um, and as you can see, I can't see. I'm just going to make my screen a little bit smaller. As you can see, I have an awful lot of updates that need to happen here. Uh, that is a bad thing. Your, your site should never look like this, ever, ever. I pulled this up because it's on my local server. Um, I, it was a, just a test site, and I knew that it needed an update, so I thought I'd use it for this particular 
experience. So I'm just going to download core and we'll start with core. And I think that, do I need to do something here? Yeah, scroll down. Okay. Register as a visitor? Do I have to put in this stuff? Okay. All right, so I downloaded Drupal. Um, I downloaded the most recent version of Drupal, and now I have to put it, I have to switch it out. So I need to go to uh, my directory where my Drupal exists which is in my applications folder at this point. Okay, so user applications, map, htdocs, Nicole Bluto. Okay, so here is my, here's my directory where Drupal lives. And <coughs> So I need to open up the Drupal that I just downloaded. Which is somewhere. Drupal. Okay. Okay. So here's here's the new Drupal and here's the old Drupal. And there's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, one way is to um, delete all of the Drupal core files here, uh, except for your sites folder, and and then transfer all your um, files over. I like to in the um, in the directory okay I don't want to go there I just want to highlight it uh, I, I get rid of this sites folder because you don't ever want to overwrite the sites folder that's on your site because that's where your modules are that's where your themes are that's where your files are that's where your settings.php is so you have to protect your sites folder from accidentally being overwritten because if you do you're in trouble so so then you can just take all of this oh this is not this is not liking me right now so you can take all of this now and bring it over here Going from local to remote? Is that what you're doing? No, this is both local. Okay. But I would imagine it's necessarily near a lot of people, like FTP and near the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it doesn't like this one, so. How did you break your first one? It's just by moving it out of it? I, in, the, in the download that I, um, that I took from Drupal.org, uh -huh. I deleted it because okay. then I know for sure it's not going to overwrite. Okay. It's not going to overwrite um, what I have. So. So with the core, oh, it's okay to just upload it to overwrite instead of deleting what's originally on there. That's not that's not the best practice. I mean, you could you could take all this, you should take all this and delete it. Um, yeah, you should take all this and delete it. Uh, not your sites folder. Like that. All right. 
Okay, so you're left with that. And then you have to take all this and bring it over. Which it doesn't want to come over for some reason. I, I didn't get one this time. <laughs> it just doesn't like it. Oh, you don't have a folder selected on the right hand side. Oh, okay. It goes right in there. Okay, so now, so now everything is there. And now you have to run update.php. So you just do your site slash update.php. Okay, so it's also important before you run update.php and before you do this, you have to put your site in offline mode. Uh, let's do that really quick. So that would be in site maintenance under site configuration. And you just stick it in offline mode. And save. So now you're in offline mode. And now you can run update.php. And you're not gonna you're not gonna mess anybody up. And hopefully I didn't forget anything. I've had instances where I've done this and I I forgot I missed a folder in the core and like my site was backwards. It was you know instead of right instead of left to right it was right to left. You have to replace all those folders and run update PHP. Yes, so you put your site in offline mode. You uh, take your your updated core files and replace them, replace your old files, not files, your uh, core um, items, and then run update.php, and it gives you a green light. It was, it was done, and it wants you, it says you can go to the main page or the administration pages. Or you're going to get the white screen of death, <laughs> which is bad. So, okay, user signatures are no longer inherit, okay. It doesn't look like there were any errors. It looks like everything is fine, uh, but for some reason I'm getting white screen of death, which means that maybe I missed something. Sometimes if you don't copy the, the original HD access file, Like it. That's true. Okay, maybe uh, maybe I need to get rid of this one too. Okay, so let's try that. So I'm going to try to go to the main page now, and then um, it's fine. Okay, you're right. So yes, make sure you do your HT access file. It wouldn't move it over for me because I already had one there. That doesn't happen on um, that doesn't happen on a remote site when you're doing this via FTP. So, uh, no, you get a new one with each update, and so you want the new one in there. Um, but yeah, there's okay. Yeah, so that was right on. Good. Sites, check for updates. That just downloads the update. It doesn't do anything else. Yeah, it just downloads it to wherever your downloads go. Okay. It's just an easy link to, to get it. Okay. So, so yeah, then um, you can go to reports, available updates again, and you can see if your update worked. So it did. Now it's green, up to date, which is good. So, yes? If you had 6.17, 6.15, 6.13, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.24, 6.25, 6.26, 6.27, 6.28, 6.29, 6.30
the matter if you go right to 6.17 and install that, and then PF just uh, install that. No, did you see how many I had? Right. It was like 6.19 was the last version that I had, and I jumped right up to 6.17. So you can skip. If it was a major uh, upgrade, would you have to... If you're, if you're going from a, a whole different version, if you're going from 6 to 7 or 5 to 6, the upgrade process is different. So this does not apply to that at all. This only applies to in-version updates. Okay. So, yes. Yes, let's do that now. Let's update a module. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You definitely, you definitely back up your sites folder, and you back up your database. Uh, I recommend a module called Backup and Migrate. So Backup and Migrate will work with your cron to do an automated backup on a uh, on a schedule. So you, if your cron runs every day, you can back up every day. If your cron runs every 15 minutes, you can back up every 15 minutes, and you know, like that. Definitely get a use. You can also use Backup and Migrate module to to give you a local backup and download it just to your local computer. Uh, Definitely take a copy of your sites folder and have that on hand just in case because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, and if you do get white screen to death, it may not be as easy as it was for us to get it back together. You may have to just revert back to your last version of your site. Um, and you always want to have that as your security blanket for sure. So definitely use that. I recommend backup and migrate. Um, so... Absolutely good question. I totally skipped that. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. All right, so let's pick a module. Um, let's let's pick something like date. So I'm going to download the date module update. And if you want to look at the release notes, you can, and it'll tell you what the security uh, issues are. It'll tell you what they're fixing. Uh, it'll tell you any, any features that have been added to the latest, to the latest version. All right, so there's date. And here's my site. My, my modules are in sites all modules and there's date so I want to get rid of date and I want to bring date in all right and then I have to run update.php again would you need to um, disable the module first or can you just uh, run over it no, you don't need to disable the modules. You can leave them on. You don't need to disable modules when you do your core update either. Even though it tells you to in the readme.txt for updates, you don't have to. And I used to for so long, and I'd have a long list of modules, and I'd have to write down, like, oh, which ones do I have to turn on and which ones do I have to turn off? And then I'd have to do the update, and then I'd have to go back to my site and make sure everything worked again because I had turned them all off and I wasn't sure. I'd take even screenshots of my, of my mo module list because I thought that's what you had to do because it said so in the thing. And, I, and then finally I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm going to try it and not turn off the modules and see what happens. <laughs> Live dangerously. And it was fine. If you and, have custom developed modules and you're doing a, 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 like a core upgrade, it's probably not a probably good idea to turn those off. And if you have a, like, you're doing a major upgrade and you have a lot of modules and you're really concerned about not screwing it up for this particular client. <laughs> thing to do, but yeah, I mean, it's not required. Yeah, in general, yeah. And if you have a custom module, I know that we usually put all of our, our customizations in one custom module. Really so easy. it's like one. It's not 25. So, yeah. Good question. Okay, so, yeah, update.php. And you, you know... 
ideally you're doing this at the same time. You're doing the core updates and then you notice you have modules, you know, that need to be updated. Back up the module that you are updating because you want to be able to revert back. You may not remember what particular version you had before. So if you have the exact one, good to have a good to have a backup. So we're still in offline mode also. Which is, you know, also not going to break your site if you don't have it in offline mode. If you're just doing one real quick and your site doesn't get a lot of traffic and there's nobody on there, that's not best practice to not have it in offline mode, but you can get away with it is what I'm saying. So that's it. You run update.php and that's it. Please no white screen of death. See, it, this always happens. It really does. It says everything's fine. And it's not. I mean, it was just a module. Okay, shoot. Okay. So now it's good. We're all good. When in doubt, refresh. All right. So that's it. And you can go back to your reports and you can see available updates. And you can see that date is no longer in need of an update. It's up to date. Uh, themes are the same way. Let's see if any of my theme, I'm, I'm sure my theme needs an update. Yep, I, uh, yeah. For a theme update, I, I would probably turn off the theme. I would go back to Garland just in case. So I'm going to I'm using Mirinelli right now. So I'm going to download it and update it. I like Mirinelli by the way. It's one of my favorite themes. I used it it was my first Drupal site. That's why I think. My first Drupal site used Mirinelli. So if you want to turn off your theme, you can go to site building themes list um find your theme. Make, okay, Mirinelli, okay. Uh, another good rule of thumb is to have a different admin theme than your main theme. Because if something happens to your main theme, you're always going to be able to see your admin theme and you're going to be able to navigate back to it. Uh, and <sighs> again, white screen of death. Okay. I did. Uh, you want to have a different admin theme than your main theme. So it also helps when you're working on your site too, because you know it's always good to know when you're. Doing something as an admin as opposed to like just looking at the site that they use in life. Oh, it doesn't like that. Hmm. So I'm not sure. I'm I'm having buggy problems with my site. The process is essentially the same for uh, for a theme. So site building themes. Yeah, it doesn't like me today. So again, this is what happens if you don't update your site. I'm sure I have another site that we can look at. Let's see what I have. Uh, design the theme. All right, let's see if this one will run. Okay. Oh, 
sorry. Sorry, unrecognized. So the process is essentially the same. I'm just going to say that you need to back up your site. Um, back up your site. Run up. Uh, download the. Download and install the theme. Where your old theme was, and run update.php, and you will not get the white screen of death. That was just particular for me because I'm lucky today. So, yeah. So, let's go back to that particular page. Okay. Module updates, theme updates. So, yeah, delete the to download the new, back it up, delete the old, uh, replace it with a new and run an update.php and it's as easy as that. And if you do it on a regular basis, you're not going to have problems like the white screen of death. You're not going to have problems with security because Drupal is very secure on its core uh, as long as it's maintained properly. If it's not maintained properly, it will not be. And I promise that it will get hacked. I promise you that you will have problems. So. Um, you're also going to maintain good performance if you are on top of your maintenance. And you're going to be able to, to utilize all the most updated features. Uh, and you will have peace of mind that everything is going to go smoothly and nobody's going to call you in the middle of the night with their site broken. So, do you have any questions? That's it. Uh, yes. For doing an admin team separately, what, what, is there a security purpose for that? Or? It, it's just in case your site goes. If your theme breaks, you can always go back to your admin theme and look at your admin theme uh, because it's separate. Gotcha. You know, but so would it have the same look and feel, or is it completely different, or is it like a backup of the original, or is it totally separate? It's just when you're in your administration pages, your slash admin, then it's a, it's a different, yeah, it's a totally different theme separate from your main public theme. And there's some good admin themes out there like um, admin, root candy is a good one. Uh, are those modules or? They're, th oh, are they modules or themes? Admin is a module, uh, root candy is a theme. Admin uses Slate. There's another one that's not on Drupal.org called Rubik, and it's based on Tau theme. Rubik, R-U-B-I-X. Rubik's? Rubik's. So, oh yes, R-U-B-I-K. Yes, right. Uh, if, if you have an older module that's not going to be maintained by Drupal anymore, but it's part of your site, yeah. when you update Drupal, how would you know that? The new upgrade of Drupal is not going to affect that. There's, there's no way to know. You just have to test and hope that it doesn't interfere. And if it does, there's a new one. Most likely, it's, you got to find a new module. Right? You either have to find a new module, you have to fix it yourself, or find somebody to fix it for you. Yeah. Do you still have to run um, update.php if you're checking the site out in some version? Or does it I don't know. Drupal 6 with the new subversion means TBS. They're moving to Git with Drupal 7. Uh, are you talking about checking out the actual files? Or? Yeah, I'm checking out the files through subversion. Oh, uh, from your guys' local thing? Correct. Uh, okay. Okay. And I'm just wondering if I still need to run update.php. Yeah, because subversion is just going to check out the files. Update.php updates the database with all the changes that you need for that module or that cluster. Thank you. <laughs> Community. Yes. Yep. Oh, so in case the mic didn't pick it up, the answer the question was: um, Do you have to run update PHP when you when you uh, check, out check out your, your check out through subversion? And the answer was yes. I mean, 
it's all multi-site. Do you have any comments regarding that as far as what you're talking about? Yeah, um, you should do a presentation on multi-site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Okay. It should it should be the same because it's all running the same core. It's running right now, so the same modules. Um, uh, you know, if you have if you have sites that are running specific modules that are specific to that, you have to do it within that um, site itself. I think. Yeah. I have like two sites. I have sites and then sites within sites. Totally, yeah. You should totally do a presentation on that. Uh, Once I get up to speed. <laughs> yeah, on multi-site. Because I went to upgrade a module, I put it in one place, and then I got uh, a runtime error. Oh. And so my site wouldn't come up, but I hacked it, and I got back in. So. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Oh. Yeah, you. Go ahead. Um, I don't, it's not actually a question. It's a, well, it's a question for you, but it's not like a question about what you've said. Have you okay. ever um, installed a site using the Acquia? Yeah, at Acquia, yes. Yeah, I have. Because, like, I know you said we can't, you can't use Drush, but um, with Acquia, you can do a line of command line and update most of the You can't use Drush with Acquia. What's that? I bet you use Drush under the hood. I've never used the Acquia. Yeah, I just, I don't, I, all I know is that it's really, I mean, install the core modules and it's the same thing. You just yeah. Turn it on and then it updates the site. Yeah. 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 Right, and if you if you download Acquia and you're not using the Acquia installer, uh, and you're running just the Acquia modules, just know that everything's in a different place. Yeah. That you're you're um, you're just gonna you're gonna have to use their updates and not Drupal.org's updates, uh, and and that your modules and stuff are in a different folder. Yeah, it, 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 when you're using Acquia and Drupal, it's confusing because. If you have an Acquia subscription, then it doesn't list CCK and you use things like that in your list of modules. It's, it shows at the top that it's part of Acquia Drupal. But if you're only using their, um, their code,